Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before. This is Gap, the Great American Broadcast Network. Hey everybody, how are you? It's Alex. We're here until uh, midnight, Eastern Daylight Time, with a little thing we like to call the Ramble. And uh, uh, every about every three weeks, we get together with somebody because we really like him a lot, and he's really smart, and he has a lot to say. Out to San Francisco, ladies and gentlemen, and the familiar wizened face, as he describes it, of Will Durst. Hello, William. Hi, and this is Eloise, and she says hi. Yes, is that your favorite? No, she's the one who likes to sit on laps, though. Oh, I see, okay. She's not a big fan of laps. Uh, Not a big fan of laps, I see. Okay, so she's, okay. So how you doing? I try to keep up, man. I mean, every week. Uh, I'm doing a, a little show. You know, you always uh, say a little show, and I just think for showbiz purposes, you should say, I'm doing a very big show. Yeah, I'm not going for that audience. No, oh, that's it. Okay. I'm going for the understated audience. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so I'm doing my little show, and it's called Durst Case Scenario Midterm Madness. I updated it, and because it's, it's significantly different than it was when I started. And that's because I have to incorporate new material every week. Material, not just musings, not just, no, but jokes that fit into the the rhythm of the rest of the show. So yeah. they have to be fully realized jokes, which means that uh, it's hard to insert something, you know, like it's, uh, like it's coming out of the half show, like Venus, you know, it's... Uh, I'm not Botticelli. I think people know this. It, this is a, a time for you where it is just rife with material. By the way, if I pat my eye every now and then, folks, it's because I have just horrible allergies today. And my oh, eye, no. oh yeah, I've been having it for the last couple of days. I don't know why. I don't know what I'm allergic to. Anyway, here's the thing. You are living in very good times for you. <laughs> but yeah. the hard part is keeping up. And also the attention span, because things things happen so quickly. You know, people come and go so quickly around here. Yeah, um, yeah that it's 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 tough because yeah, my Anthony Scaramucci stuff. You know, <laughs> that was ten days. Ten right. days he was in office. Right, so. and and I, you never mention him again, or do you? No, I can't. I can't. People don't remember him. I'm doing a joke. <laughs> I'm doing the joke about uh, Bowling Green, and I refuse to take it out of my act. You know, I talk about when uh, Kellyanne Conway went on TV and intimated that the the uh, Obama surveillance of Trump Tower might have been accomplished through the microwave oven. Yes, it was the evil microwave oven in league with the toaster. And the, these are the same kitchen appliances responsible for the tragedy in Bowling Green. Can I ask you a question that makes me People sound... People don't remember Bowling Green. Let me you ask know, you, so let me ask you a, a question that. that will make me sound politically stupid. And I follow this stuff. Is Kellyanne Conway still hired by the Trump administration? Yeah, she's a member of the... Uh, you, it, the it's staff. funny because you hardly ever... You don't you used to hear from her every other minute. Right. Now, occasionally, she winds up on a Sunday program or something like that, or she makes a comment, but it's nothing like before. It's like she's almost gone under the radar. Well, she became the object of scorn and derision uh, because there were like three things in a row, and one was alternative facts. She was the one who coined the term alternative facts when she meant we're just lying and you should believe our lies. And it became pretty obvious. And then she had the moment when she uh, said that uh, Obama surveillance might have been accomplished through the microwave oven. And then there was a third one, and I can't remember that. But it was like, boom, boom, boom. And people said, you know, maybe you should slow down a bit. So I think uh, she's been on the back burner. (laughs) 
I, uh, because I, you know, I got to tell you something about Kellyanne Conway and, and correct me if I'm wrong, because I'm maybe too forgiving of her, but I feel that she was doing her job. Not I, not, uh, not you. Cause I just felt she was doing her job and she was doing it to the best of her ability, given really horrible circumstances. All right. You don't agree. No, I think uh, she's emblematic of her principles, which are none, hollow. She's a husk of a woman. She looks like she was put together. She was assembled out of defective IKEA parts, and then flash frozen for optimum brittleness. That's that's what I think of her. She's she's a husk, and I've met her a couple of times. You have what she like in person. Exactly. There is no difference. Really, no difference. No usually, difference you know, at all. There's usually... no warmth. There's no. There's no courtesy. There's no um, personal contact. It's all just her promoting herself. I met her twice, both times. Yeah. Wow, wow. Because usually, you know, people you you hate, right, uh, uh, publicly. Uh, you meet them, and they're charming, and they're terrific, and you you like them. Like, for instance, I'll give you a good example. Mike Huckabee is a really nice guy. Yeah. Really, really nice guy. I really Baptist enjoyed him. minister and a former governor. So <coughs> <coughs> he has that charm thing down. Yeah, but, I mean, he was he was just terrific. I really enjoyed it. It's organic. Yeah. You know? Now, I'll tell you who I hated. Just couldn't stand when you me. met. Yeah, Newt Gingrich. Oh, really? I mean, it, 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 there's nothing humorous about this guy. He has no sense of humor whatsoever. Yeah, well, his eyes are on the prize, which is all about promoting Newt Gingrich. You know? Yeah, yeah. There's no room for humor. Yeah, I mean, I had him on twice, and the first time I was very nice to him uh, because I wanted to get him on a second time. I mean, I, it, when I say nice to him, I, 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 there's a way of confronting people and there's a way of confronting people. And there's a way of confronting them where they go run. And that's not good if you're doing an interview because you're trying to lull them into a sense of security. <laughs> right? False or otherwise. Now, I always hated the way a, a, a Geraldo did an interview or somebody like that who, who was always in your face, you know. And so the minute you started asking that first nasty question, they just... They tightened up, right? What you want to do is get them to relax and feel comfortable in your presence. And then you hit them wacko with the question, right? Uh, and Gingrich, I was nice to the kind of the first time. So he would come back a second time. And sure enough, he came back a second time. And I'm interviewing him. And I think I got him. Got him good. Uh, I said to him, I said, are you a religious man? He said, oh, yes. I said, uh, go to church on Sunday? Oh, yes, I go to church on Sunday. I said, then how come you work on the Lord's Day? He said, what do you mean? I said, you're on all those talk shows. <laughs> but I go to church first. I, th that doesn't matter. It's the Lord's Day. It's the Lord Day of Rest. I said, you know, what's his name from New York uh, can, uh, can, can do it on Sunday? Because he takes Saturday off. <laughs> <laughs> and he didn't have an answer for me he did not have an answer that cat really does like to be on the lap and in your face yes the, yes she showed off her tail or her ass cats love to show off their ass and rub it in it, your face well you know it's it's they have a clean butt and they're very proud of it and uh yeah um yeah who else did i meet you know People meet, like, um, who who's the big mouth uh, Republican woman that Bill Maher uh, actually enjoys having on his show? And I thought that was strange, bedfellows. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, what's her name? Yeah, the one who writes all the books in this really. Coulter and Coulter. Coulter and Coulter. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, there are. I mean, you look at Mary Madeline and, uh, you know, James Carville, and they got married. There must be something about Mary Madeline. Either she gives the world's greatest blowjob, or, uh, or there's something about her intellectually that he admires. 
You know, well, I always found her intellectually uh, honest about her beliefs. Yeah. Uh, her beliefs were pretty uh, straightforward and, you know, the whole conservative movement and you get to bring yourselves up by your bootstraps and stuff like that. But so, we always yeah. heard about movie stars who we said would never last because they were so different and they had marriages that went on forever. Yeah, yeah. You know? Sometimes opposites do attract. Well, I, I, they make life interesting, you know. I mean, uh, do you and Debbie get along so well that you don't argue and you don't have differences of opinion on things? Pretty much, uh, especially after 37 years. You kind of figure it out. Uh, but that's also because of my uh, retiring personality. I'm, I, I, don't, I don't care. I don't. I don't care. I don't understand people who do care. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't care. I, I was watching the other night. Let me let me take a little side trip here. I was watching uh, uh, Three Still Standing. Oh, cool! The film with you and uh, 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 Bubbles, Bubbles and and, and, and Johnny Steele. Johnny Steele. And um, um, you got a lot of time on that thing. Because you were you were the most kind of the most interesting to talk to, you know. You gave long, interesting answers about the business, and you were, you know, yeah, and whatever. Mr. Philosophy, yeah. I felt they gave gave Bubbles less time because Bubbles is kind of to the point, and what you get see is what you get, you know. Bubbles speaks in epigrams too, you know. <laughs> He doesn't speak, and uh, he doesn't. You know, everything is is just a knee jerk joke to him, and they could never get him to open up. That's my theory. Yeah, that, yeah. yeah. Well, I'm also because his humor is. I mean, when, even when he does it here, uh, although when we talk, it's more of a discussion, and we just enjoy each other's conversation. But uh, he, you know, people don't understand that he has one line jokes like butter. And you have to know what he's saying, yeah. you know. Uh, but it's uh, over, buddy. But, but it, it's on. It's on Netflix now, you know. Or is it on Netflix, Netflix or, or Amazon? And Netflix Amazon Prime, huh? Amazon Prime. Yeah. And uh, uh, so, if Amazon, you have Amazon Prime, folks, and who doesn't? Because you want your packages delivered. Free shipping, yeah, yeah. Um, you can uh, you can see it. It's called uh, Three Still Standing, and uh, two of the three are regulars on this program. So I, I can't tell if it's a good movie because I'm too close to it, but it's pretty. It's really pretty. It's well I can done. tell you that. It's well crafted. Yeah, yeah. My my question would be, did you like? I mean, it was nice to get the publicity. It was nice to get the attention. But was it? Did it feel good to you about getting the idea that well, here are three losers who are still standing? Well, that's what uh, Johnny's major complaint was. Uh, me, it was just seeing me like uh, in, you know, in situ. It was kind of like a, a frozen moment in time of yeah. me just trying to earn a living. So I was totally fine with that. But Johnny had some problems because of the editing. Uh, it shows him doing an old folks home, you know, yeah. and it looks kind of desperate. And <laughs> you know, he's doing he's doing a lot of corporates and he's doing a lot of really good gigs. So he was worried that it, it made him look. But it did it did really show when he uh, and his wife Allison uh, try to put together the one man show that he's doing tomorrow, <laughs> you know, the next day. Uh, so I thought that was illustrative of, of the Johnny that we all know and love. Yeah. Uh, or that you love. I don't love Johnny. But uh, yeah. <laughs> for obvious reasons years ago. Uh, but uh, I, just, I just feel that it's something that you, you know, our audience should go go watch. It's on Amazon Prime and it's, you know, if you get Amazon Prime, it's free with the shipping. <laughs> you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, uh, yeah it's a good, good, good film. Good film. The problem was that year. I'm even in it. I'm in it. Yeah, you introduced me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the problem was that year. Well, I thought they should have talked to you more. They never got uh, a hold of me. Yeah, that was a problem of geography, I think. Yeah. Because I thought uh, that whole 
I think that I don't think that you were the m major reason for comedy to have the huge um, crest of the wave of the comedy wave, but you were a major reason why the Bay Area became um, that kind of breeding I was ground. I was that, part of the I was part of the mix that made it happen. Yeah, well, I mean, you were part of the zeitgeist, but you were a huge part of the zeitgeist. Yeah, and you also taught comics because we wouldn't go on for five or ten minutes. We would you would have us on for three hours. We were co-hosts, yeah. so we learned the rhythm of radio. And so many of the comics that you mentored on that show went on to have radio careers. I mean, it's it's because you taught us how to do it. You know, you you have to you have to pace yourself, and and if the other guy gets a laugh, that's fine because the show <laughs> is funny. I mean, there was so much that we learned. I mean, you never learn when you go on one of these morning shows and and you do ten minutes and one guy's laughing at everything. You know, I mean, you don't learn anything. And uh, and and you promoted the because you think when you started, what was it, 80, 81, 82? Mm -hmm. In the Bay Area, yeah. I mean, you caught the crest of the comedy wave, and and you used bellows to blow it up. I mean, Bay Area. Yeah, but you know what I did? What I did wasn't by design. That's the interesting part about it. It happened all by accident. I mean, one thing I always liked. I always had this theory in in broadcasting that you let things evolve. You don't sit down and say tomorrow we're going to do comedy. You know, right. You let things evolve, and one thing led to another, and it wound up being that, okay? And uh, so if— You reflected I, the time. I was, I, was, I was the zeitgeist, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 I reflected and the time. Cable, cable had discovered comedy because Cable was voracious for content, and then they discovered that you didn't have to pay music fees, you didn't have to pay writers because comics were self-contained. So that's why they loved comedy. Well, there was an old, and, there was an old joke when uh, A Night at the Improv was on A&E that the two most predominant figures on A&E at that time were Bud Freeman and Adolf Hitler. Yeah, it was the comedy <laughs> and Nazi channel. It was. <laughs> but, um, uh, yeah, I mean, I'd like to think I had something to do with it. I, I just, you know, uh, I felt I could have probably contributed a lot to that documentary. But, you know, I'm in it for a brief five seconds, I think. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's some comics in the Bay Area who who were pissed about, uh, you know, they're not the only three still standing, but we're the only three. Yeah, that there's, always Perry, there's always Perry Kurtz. Who I hear... <laughs> Was on. No, yeah, but wait a minute. Hold on a second. Jimmy Fallon last night? No, no, no. You're uh, uh, James Corden. He was on Corden. Yeah. Here's here's what here a couple of nights ago. Here's what happened. Yeah. So he sends me this thing through Messenger uh, for Facebook Messenger. You know Perry Kurtz on James Corden, and I'm going. Either Perry Kurtz got really good, or he's lying to us. <laughs> Uh, and it, tur it turns out he was lying to us. Oh, really? What it was was a thing where they take people uh, uh, supposedly out of the audience and they come in with some kind of talent. And so that's what he was doing. That was his thing. Oh, it was. A, it it, it was wasn't a... like he did stand up or anything like that. Or ladies and gentlemen, and now here's Perry Kurtz. If you get a chance, go on YouTube. He's got it up there. Perry Kurtz on James Corden or on, yeah. Poor baby. Poor baby. Yeah. He, uh, by the way, when we talk about Perry Kurtz, uh, I, I think easily the worst comic in America. <laughs> I don't think That's I'm making not any. Fair. I'm making. That's not fair. Huh? I've seen some, many, many other worst comics. I, when I was working used to, uh, in uh, Florida, rather, in Miami for that three months that I was down there. Some guy who owned a comedy club said, oh, we hired, we got a act uh, from the Bay Area. Yeah, yeah. I said, oh, who? Who's coming in? He said, Perry Kurtz is headlining. I said, what? Headlining? <laughs> I said, headlining? Perry Kurtz? And he said, yeah, yeah, yeah. He says he's, he sent us all his stuff. Boy, it looks like he's hot. <laughs> and they hired him. And with one night, they fired him. 
<laughs> they said it was terrible. It was. He says we should have listened to you, Alex. I mean, I wasn't trying to kill Perry getting a job, so I didn't tell him don't hire him. But I went, <laughs> Perry, fucking Kurtz. You know. Oh, but there, for the grace of God, go you or I. Well, I mean, <laughs> I, I hate to put down other comics, but my my greatest revelation, I think, in life was when my wife and I, Susan, at the time. We're driving through the south of France because we were on vacation. And I get a call and I listen. I go, mm hmm, uh huh, mm hmm, uh huh. And I hang up and she said, What was that? I said, That was California. They just wanted to tell me that Doug Ferrari won the comedy competition. <laughs> and so we continued driving down the Côte du Jour, whatever, you know. <laughs> And all of a sudden, almost together at the same time, about 20 minutes later, we look at each other and go, uh, Doug Ferrari? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I wasn't there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, you won the comedy competition, didn't you? Yeah, the year before, I think. Yeah, yeah. But, so that was 84. And from what I was led to believe... Mm -hmm was the huge kabuki stage is where they had the finals. Yeah. And Pitta was expected to win, and he had a good set. And then Ferrari used the whole stage, ran around and used the whole stage, and some judges found that. Of course, it was, it's all so subjective. You know, yeah, yeah, who, it's, uh, comedy is not a competition, folks. You know, whoever but I always liked the comedy competition because for that three-week period, I would live – Breathe and eat. It helped my you. Act. It did help you improve your act. I would focus. Yeah. Y yeah. Yeah. It was like a boot camp. It was. Yeah. Let's get back to the world at large. What do you see now? This whole gun thing. You know, I mean, I am sick of it. That they, they just don't do anything. How many? Do you know that there have been since? This is not the time. To politicize. Oh, excuse me. I'm sorry uh, about that. I should like yeah, right. I'm right, not sure right. we should actually even be talking yeah, about. Yeah. Uh, when is when is the when when can we start talking about it? Um, wait, wait a minute. Hold on a second. What time is it? Wait. We got we got three seconds. Sending our thoughts we, and prayers. We got three seconds. We can start talking about it. <laughs> um, ever since uh, Newtown, uh, where was it? Uh, the thing, Connecticut, yeah, yeah. Newtown. Yeah. Do you know there have been 400 shootings in schools? It was in the New York Times. They had them all listed. I mean, since Newtown. Some of those are accidental firings. Not all of those were uh, active shooters. You Re know? Really? You think? Yeah. 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 But still. It's, it's still, not somebody still, coming in. Still, and, and it's gun-related. Okay, yeah. it's yeah. access to guns, whether it's some kid who brought one to school to show his friends and it accidentally went off and killed a kid. Right. Or whether it was some guy who goes in with an AK-47 and wipes out his class. But how many more of these have to happen before these morally bankrupt Republicans say we got to do something about this? They're always they're always blaming the individual, never the fact that the guns were put in the hands of that individual by a society that allowed it. Well, also, I mean, you, you look at, if you want to talk about uh, the hypocrisy, I mean, the first thing they talk about is mental health, and then you ask them if they supported the president when he got rid of the, the ruling that uh, made it harder for mentally ill people to buy guns, do they support that? Well, yeah, I support that. Well, you said it was mental. So they're just diverting. It's going to, it's it's reaching a point of diminishing returns, though. You know, so I, I think it's going to take numbers. That's the only way to sway Congress is by having commensurate numbers because they know how many people, you know, you, Hillary Clinton's going to take my gun. You know, no. No, she's not. Uh, but that that involves a certain amount of education. We're talking about people who uh, never graduated from high school, so it's hard for them to uh, figure out that Hillary Clinton doesn't want to take their gun. But uh, it's and if the kids can get the numbers, you know, if the kids go to the town halls and they make uh, the congressmen, um, uh, they put them on the spot and demand a yes or a no on gun control, and then if they don't like the answer. They get up en masse and walk out. 
they they could turn this thing around. The the the, the kids down in Florida are going to Washington, uh, and they're going to protest. Uh, and I think that's going to be a very interesting protest because here you have people who've been shot upon saying, okay, something's got to be done about this. But I just don't know how, how a society can, uh, can protect guns but not kids. You know, I think kids would come first, at least. Ooh, if, I like that. I like that. You know, I mean. Don't protect guns, protect kids. Yeah, I mean, it, it's like, don't touch my guns, don't touch my guns. What about the kids? Screw the kids. We, you know, we want our guns. Yeah, let them have a gun. <laughs> and just the national sickness. There is a national sickness we have about guns. It exists nowhere else in the world. Not even ISIS feels this way about guns. <laughs> You know, I mean, it's just insane. Well, the NRA's answer to school shootings is less schools. <laughs> <laughs> and now, now, of course, here's what I figure. Republicans hate old people and kids. That's really <laughs> what it is, because now they figure, gee, how are we going to pay for that tax thing? Oh, well, maybe we could cut back on Medicare and 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 social social security. Fuck you. You start doing that. I'm strapping a bomb to my body and I'm going down to Washington. You there know? are so many fuck yous to these people. There are so many. Uh, oh, well, we have to worry about the deficit. Fuck you. You didn't care about the deficit when you gave yourself this huge tax cut for the rich. Fuck you. Well, maybe he's not moral person. Fuck you. You didn't care when the president had pay a a porn star payoff? You didn't care about a porn star payoff? Fuck you. You never get to talk about that issue again. Uh, how, how about a Playmate payoff? Yes. You know, yes. It's, it, they all have to start with P's, by the way. Playmate payoff, porn star payoff. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it, yeah. It's an illiterate nightmare. <laughs> I mean, this, and then on top of that, this guy is like uh, every Christian's nightmare. Yeah. Cheats on and his they wife. Don't care. He they didn't, he didn't evangelicals, just... oh, we'll give him a mulligan. Yeah. <laughs> Hashtag me too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, oh, man. It's just, it's insane. It is just insane. And the fact that they are trying to go after Social Security and Medicare and, uh, and, uh, uh, yeah. Whatever. Oh, because we got to bring our deficits down. You know, you, 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 you know, my, my ex-wife, Ronnie, uh, put it best when she said, they always talk about these as entitlements, and she says uh, they should be considered earned benefits. Because really, that's what you did. You had to work in order to get them. You know, money was taken out of your paycheck in order to take care of it. It's, we can't help it if the if the government stole the social security money to pay for wars. Yeah, if they went on a drunken bender in Vegas and lost all their money. Yeah. And, and aren't these Republicans the guys who always yell when the Democrats are in office? Oh, we're overspending. We've got a deficit. And all of a sudden, they get in office and they give away what one and one point three trillion dollars in tax yeah, breaks yeah. to basically rich people. Yeah, I mean, so, rich, is, so rich people could have more money. This is yeah. just, it's, 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 you couldn't write this kind of dystopian nightmare. No, and the Democrats always have to clean up the mess. They always have to, oh, we have to scale back, but I don't know, yeah, no. Yeah, no, well, you, no what I, I love about the Democrats, I, the Democrats, I, this shit. The de I, it's time to lose the mandolin music and download some Metallica and go to war with these assholes. The Democrats are like dogs. Who, when you throw the ball, they go chase it, and then when you don't throw the ball but you pretend to, they still go chase it. <laughs> the Democrats are that way. The Democrats go, We want to be president, we want to be in power, we want to be in power. Okay, we're in power now. Uh, wait a minute, we've got all these problems the Republicans created. Now we've got to solve it. And then, while they're after they're in office, the next time the Republicans run and see, See, they had a deficit, see, they did this wrong, blah blah blah. They didn't. The Democrats didn't do anything. They inherited all that crap. People have short memories. Yeah. I mean, I, I just, I, we live in just a, boy, it's a wonderful world for Will Durst, political comic, who has, you know, who last Thank week was you. very, very sick, so sick he couldn't do this show. But you still did your show that night, right? Yeah, I did. Show must go on.
last Tuesday. Did you get through it okay? Uh, it was uh, staggering near the end. <laughs> it's, 90 minutes. it's 90 minutes. Yeah. And uh, I think last week it was 85. <laughs> so I might have sh- I might have sh- skipped a couple of parts. Yeah. 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 Well, you you insist on doing a one man show, so that's your that's your cross to bear. <laughs> yeah, it's I don't have to split the money. What well, okay, one last thing. What do you think's the biggest problem we got going on right now? Oh, I don't know. Uh, Trump. I think getting him out. Um I here here's my prediction. Um in November. Yeah. If the election is fair, mm-hmm. the Democrats will take the House. If the election isn't fair, <laughs> hello, New Zealand. <laughs> You're looking for a place to live, huh? Yeah, if this election isn't fair and the Democrats don't take the House, because traditionally that's always been the way, and we've seen it in special elections, and that's that's just the way it's going. And that would be the first the first real proof that uh, a totalitarian um, government was uh, about to take over and deny us any rights. Yes, and- because they might have meddled in the last election, and if there's proof that they're going to meddle in the next election, then in 2020, <laughs> they won't give a shit. Well, just- I, I, I just love the Trump fact that... 95% of the electoral vote. Trump said, uh, they're, uh, in Russia, they're laughing at us. You bet yeah, they life, are. You bet your life they are, but for <laughs> not the reasons you think, asshole. Yeah. Hey, Will Durst, always great talking to you. There's nothing like talking to a Will Durst or any other kind of Durst. No, there isn't. Yeah. No. It's, and, it's a unique experience. And it's always fun because uh, you make it sound like a conversation, which is the way well, I always That's what it you. is. <laughs> and that's what it is, not an interview. Anyway, hey, listen, my best to Deborah, and uh, you got we'll, it. we'll see you in a couple of weeks, okay? Let's do it. Ladies and gentlemen, Will Durst. Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is Gap, the Great American Broadcast Network. Hey, everybody, that's Will Durst. I love Will. I love having him on, and uh, he will be on with us uh, again in a couple of weeks. He does it about every three weeks. Uh, tomorrow night, by the way, uh, my uh, ex-wife, Ronnie, is going to be with us. Uh, so uh, that, that that should be interesting as well. In fact, that we've already done it, so I can tell you it's interesting. Anyway, it's time now for us to go to the phones. Or not the phones. That's an old expression. That makes me sound old-fashioned. You were going to go to the phones. No, we're going to go to the Skype, actually. If you don't know what Skype is, go to gabnet.net. And over on the right-hand side of the page, it will tell you everything you need to know about Skype, which will allow you to call this program. It will also give you a phone number that you can use to call this program as well in order to uh, um, be able to uh, 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 access it just using the way your grandmother would. Uh, the, The difference is when you use Skype, we can see you. The difference is when there's Skype and we can see you, you can raise your hand when you want to talk. When you're calling on the phone, you kind of got to have to jump in and kind of make a little bit more room for yourself than you would have to do if you were using Skype. Skype is very easy to use, very easy to install, and it doesn't cost anything. How those people make money, I have absolutely no idea. Uh, I do have an idea, though, of how this guy makes money. (laughs) Rob has an actual paying job. How about that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. How are you? Yeah. Oh, you're okay. We're okay. Let me see here. Phil's calling in now, uh, which is good because you're a little out of sync. Always the first person calling is out of sync until um, hey, Vernon Nunn is calling. Boy, we're all of a sudden we're having a, a, a gang reunion here. Hello, Phil. How are you? I'm just fine. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, I think. Uh, oh, wait a minute. I think you. You know that's talk. enough to make get, me. Hang, that's enough to make me. Hang, that's enough to make me hang up on you. I'm serious. Uh, I'm serious. That's not funny. Of course it's funny. Yeah, you, know, you just got done talking a half hour uh, on on the shootings, and uh, you know I uh, I come in tell you to duck. Uh, they're after Gabnet. It's not funny. All it's, right. It's just not. 
It's not funny. I, 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 you know, I mean, it, it, it's a very serious problem, Phil. Uh, you know, we had a great we had a great discussion about it the other night, and part of the reason why I think it was great, and I, I'm not I'm not putting you down when I say this, was that you weren't involved in the conversation, because okay. because it became a very serious focused t discussion about what we are in America and what we're becoming and how do we stop this sort of thing. And uh, if you were here, it would have changed the whole tone of it. So I was glad that in a way you weren't here the other night. Not that I don't appreciate your participation. Don't take that wrong. But hey, no problem. I think Scott knows what I'm saying, right, Scott? You heard it the other night. Yeah, it was, it was a, I listened to it obviously on the replay. I wasn't there, but it was just very nice. Everyone talked amongst themselves no interruptions nobody talking on top of you or everybody else it was just very pleasant yeah. and very useful conversation yeah it was and it was uh it was uh i think one of the best programs we've ever done to be honest oh. with you uh, it was terrific oh you'll have another chance tomorrow oh good what are you doing tomorrow night uh, another uh club meeting uh i'm submitting another uh, photo oh i see okay well yeah all right. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, but, uh, it, 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 you know, I, I don't think, I don't think it's very funny, Phil, you know, it's really getting too serious. It's getting out of hand. It's just getting out of hand. Well, if you can't joke about stuff, well, you can't, you, no, you can't, no, this, no, this is something you can't joke about. You really can't. Would, would anybody here, would you agree with me, Rob? Well, you can't, this, there's nothing funny about this. Yeah, I'm not, uh, I'm, uh, you know, we're past it. We're past uh, joking about it, really, when it comes time to talking about this stuff. We joke about Trump and all that. But when it comes to, we've got a whole generation of kids now who are afraid to go to school. How about parents who are afraid that, to send them there? Yeah. I mean, uh, there's something wrong That there. was something else we heard the other night. When Kevin, the other night, said, mm -hmm. I'm afraid to let my kid go to school every day now. Yeah. That said it all for me, you know. Uh, did you uh, see that uh, video that I sent you this morning? No, I didn't. Uh, it had to do with uh, the fact that they showed that each and every major uh, shooting incident uh, had to do with psychotropic drugs. And that yeah, was... Okay, and, okay. It's, uh, it may be bullshit. It may not be bullshit. But quite uh, frankly... I watch it. Uh, you know, you know you'll, you'll uh, quit, quit, tr uh, quit trying to blame it on everything else. Well, yes, you're blaming Rob. it on yes, guns. Rob, you're yes, trying yes to blame I blame it, it on guns because that's what's killing people, you, Phil. You, that's what's killing them. That's what's yeah. killing them, Phil. Rob, I'll, say I'll something. I'll take what Phil said for face value. Maybe true. Possibly is true. That doesn't excuse the gun laws in this country that those kids or that those these people on these psychotropic drugs are able to get a hold of these weapons. Absolutely. I say that if you're on psychotropic drugs, that should be a disqualifier for you to be able to buy a weapon. I agree. I think I think everybody agrees. Why can't it happen? Yeah. If you're on these things. That that it's no different than uh, you know if you okay. can't control name, 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 name me a psych, psychotropic it, drug it, so I know what you're talking about. Uh, it's Zoloft. Uh, 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 well, I, all I know is Zoloft <laughs> made me as unviolent as any human being you can imagine. I understand, but what happens is is people go on it and they have some people have different reactions, yeah. and, and they, then some people when they go off of it yeah. you know, have either suicidal or homicidal. Well, That's all. You know, but so stop with that Scientology crap. Okay, uh, this, you, you're, you're, speaking, you're speaking Scientology crap. But you know these people. Where did have, your little video have, come have, from? Where did your little video come from? Do you know? Maybe it came from the Russians. Maybe it came from the well, Russians, no, came huh? From the Nazis. You know what it is is if if you're right. you're you're into these drug pushing doctors oh, that God. would rather. Instead of somebody like Viktor Frankl, who solved things through uh, uh, man's ap uh, ability to use his mind to overcome uh, adversity, what these people do, these psychiatrists, is they dispense drugs. And, and then when it backfires and it turns somebody into a killer or a suicidal maniac, then well, well we, seem to, it seem, it, we seem to be having a lot of maniacs lately because... 
in since a new town and uh, um, uh, Ray, uh, Ray sent me a, 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 the a Times article on it. There have been 400 school shootings since Newtown. Yes, and just like uh, Will Durst said, some of them were misfires. Some of them were, you know, just... Uh, uh, there were 400 issues. shootings. Well, That's the when statistic. I was a kid, when I was a kid... When, I, I don't care I, what, what it was. When you were a kid, all, all, the, all, the, all bets were off. All the rules were different. Yes, because they didn't have all these rules. I remember a show and tell in second or third grade. I brought a gun to school. It wasn't loaded. And, you know, they passed it around. Yeah, Everybody yeah. looked at it. Yeah. If I would have done that yeah, uh, uh, two He's years so ago or six months ago, they'd shut the school down. We've been joined by Ray Renati. Ray, uh, thank you for sending me that article from the New York Times. It was pretty uh, illuminating, actually. Uh, you're welcome, Alex. Yeah. Let's see yeah. your face. There we go. Yeah. Was, yeah. it, was I quoting it pretty well? 400 shooting? Yeah, um, yeah, it was 400, but it was, I looked at it, it was from a number of years ago in that first shooting. I, I Yeah. But it's it, that's why that's why Will couldn't believe the number, but it was from a shooting like about six or seven years ago. Yeah, but that's still, It wasn't just... It's still... You, know, just a couple uh, of Ray, you, you watched the thing well, I sent you. Yeah, hold yeah on it was a, a bunch of propaganda, Phil. Nice. Like, so oh, yes, it was. In Absolutely. 1966, the shooter that went up into the uh, to the wa to the tower uh, and and shot what was it 19 people? Oh, uh, that guy had a had a uh, had just a hunting rifle. It was a single shot. You know, uh, you, you cranked the thing Charles back. Whitman. I know. I, w I was in yeah. Texas at the time. Yeah, I'm going to have a hard time on this call because uh, I saw the thing. It's propaganda. And Phil, when you when you talk like this. I just can't tolerate it. I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm probably going to have to hang up because I like you, Phil, but th you're you're like you're not using your head, okay? Well, I'm sorry, I, but I, I mean it's just Ill no. completely illogical. The stuff that, these they found some doctors that told some stories. Yeah. Do you know how many people are saved by psych psychotropic drugs every year from killing themselves and killing other people because they are so freaking depressed? And then you have a few people. Who have these urges, and then even a smaller amount that act upon them, a super super small amount. And this video made it seem like everybody who takes psychotropic but, but, drugs but, but, hold, is hold. insane and is yeah. going to shoot everybody. Ray, to begin with, Ray, uh, Rob has his hand up. Rob, I'm going to tell you from my experience with antidepressants and talking to doctors about depression that they are so quick to try to get you to chew tablets. And I, I, it is true. I been I'm on one. I've been on one for 35 years. I took five years before I even started taking it. I had to take six medicines before I found one that worked. How tough is it to get off of them? I had a rough time. Super hard, them. but I will of it. Look, I've been I, on that for 35 I, 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 years I was on saved my life. Okay, I was on Zoloft for about two years, okay? Uh, and I one day decided to stop taking it, and I stopped taking it, and it was just fine. No problem. I had either a really low dose because I, every, I was on and off them three times, and each time I went through, each time was actually longer a period of crazy, horrible uh, side effects from it. Even trying to wean myself off it the yeah. right way, I vowed I will never, ever take another one of those drugs There was again. a period of time where I think it was life-saving for me. I me too. That, I was in a bad way. Yeah, I bad, was in a bad, bad way, too. way. Uh, But I think that what happened was after a while, I began to see that it made me, it made me less aggressive so that my, my, air, my air style changed and the ratings <laughs> went down. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> And uh, when I came to New York, I was still using them when I was out of work, and I was still using it, and I finally decided to stop taking it because I wasn't aggressive enough to go find a job. It's true. So it, I needed it, the it aggression that not being on that drug gave me, and, but I will say that when I took it, when I really needed it, it was a lifesaver for me. How old were you when you were taking these? I was in my 50s. Okay. Do you think that giving uh, school-age kids these kinds of drugs is the right way to deal with their problems? It depends how yes. bad... I had to give it to my son, and it was the only way that he could get through, and it worked when he was in school, when he was what? in high school. What? And 
Uh, if he hadn't taken it, I don't know that he would have gotten through. Yeah. Well, it was the right decision. Absolutely. What do, you know, in the 60s and, and, and late 50s and the 60s when they didn't have this stuff? And, you know, I didn't see that the kids are shooting up schools. You know, you maybe, assault rifles. You, what you're trying to do is you're trying to God. you're trying to, uh, you know, you're, you're trying to obviate. And 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 uh, you're dismissed. Wait a minute. Hold on a second, point. Phil. Shut up, Phil. You're trying to dismiss exactly. the one factor in all these shootings that existed, and it wasn't pills, and it wasn't uh, somebody uh, doing this or that or whatever. It, one thing: they had a gun. Okay. Oh, so what? So what though. we've got to do is: how did a guy, <laughs> this kid, this kid had? So many problems that he was in a school love, for right. for 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 uh, for horrible children. He was in a uh, uh, he was being followed by the police. I mean, everybody knew this was a bad kid, and somehow right. he was able to walk in somewhere in Florida and just buy a gun. Yeah, he have been is, able to. Yeah, but no, he shouldn't have been able to. Sister. But that's what we're talking about, Phil. What do it, we do to prevent him from being able to do that? It's that a is the issue, I think, because what's happening is that nobody is reporting uh, these incidents. And, you know, when they, although when it came to the police and all the contacts that they had, the police failed. The, the FBI failed. All of these people failed. And they failed us. They failed those kids in Florida. And you know uh, something? And the state of Florida failed their people by allowing those guns to be promiscuously sold. And today, today they had a chance to do something about it, and they decided that they weren't going to take a vote on doing, uh, on trying to clamp down on like assault I, I, rifles, okay. not on I, pistols, on assault rifles. I don't think that the that they uh, that the that they are being promiscuously sold. I believe that the systems that are in place are not being properly used. And if they were, and that Trump says that he wants uh, uh, more um, uh, background checks. He wants uh, uh, better background checks. And he's even uh, today said these bump stop things, he's putting a temporary well, Forget ban. about the fucking bump stocks. You know, that's like saying, uh, uh, you know, I'm going to do this, but that's not going to solve the problem. Okay? It's a beginning. No, it's the beginning would be for him to say, hey, there's no reason for any American in their home or on their person to own an assault rifle. I, I don't agree. You see, when uh, when people came back from uh, Vietnam, uh, they uh, they used uh, and Korea, for instance, they used M1 Garands. Okay. This was this was the gun that they were familiar with. When you come back from uh, Afghanistan or Iraq, you've had hundreds of hours of training on that type of gun. Get used and, to a fucking pistol, Phil. Well, even the pistol that I carry uh, okay. is, is All right. what Listen, I carry. Let you everybody know, else let everybody else here talk right. a little bit here because I want to spread the wealth around. Bob, you just joined us. What what is your thinking? Uh, the whole problem, like you said, is the availability of these guns, and you know those kids went to the. Uh, uh, House of Representatives or whatever it was in Florida today to Slater. bring out their point and basically uh, the Republicans there told them to go fuck themselves. Yep. What was the vote? Uh, they voted today. They voted. Like they voted. Or some, it, some crazy number, 34 or 31 to 70 something. Uh, yeah. How many, uh, how many uh, rep uh, uh, people crossed the uh, the aisle to, uh, on that vote. Probably Any? nobody, because nobody crosses the aisle anymore. That's half the problem of this society. <clears throat> yeah. Yes, Bob. Also, this bullshit about uh, Trump and uh, bump stocks, that's just him placating and trying to do something to sound like he's doing something, because in the end, he's going to do nothing. He's a phony. He was a gun act. He was a gun uh, back in 2000. He was for gun control. But he knows if he wanted to get elected, he had to get he's had to get on the NRA's good side. He doesn't believe in anything, nothing. The, the, this the, this, believes the, in whatever will get him elected. Ted, uh, not Ted Cruz, uh, uh, Marco Rubio, uh, is in the pocket in the NRA from Florida. Yeah. What do you think is going to happen with from Florida? Yes, Ray. Well, uh, 
Trump's campaign received over $35 million from the NRA, just FYI. Mm-hmm. I looked it up. Who's? 30, Trump, his mm-hmm. campaign. Over, and, 30, 30, or over $35 million. And Obama and Hillary, how much did they get from? What the, the hell does that have to do with anything? I, 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 you know, right? you know something? I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, gonna t- I'm gonna call you on this, Phil. Wait a minute, I'm gonna call you on this because what happened is John Oliver. Uh, I was watching one of his older shows, and he said one of the things that the Trump people and the writers, right wingers, like to do now is this thing called "what aboutism." In other words, you bring up something that's a salient point and it's important to discuss. You say, well, "What about what Obama did?" But that has okay. nothing to do with the discussion, How Phil. Money? What it has to do is what's being done now. How much money have all of the uh, uh, Congress and the Senate, been, the House, been given uh, by Big Pharma? You know, I think thirty-five you know, million. But, uh, again, you, that uh, is what aboutism, and it has no well, basis for it. It has, so it has it has nothing to do with the conversation, so, Phil. Yes. No. My, what you're my, doing is you're trying to divert the conversation into what aboutism. Well, my belief is that it's caused by drugs, not guns. Your belief is it's caused by drugs, uh, by guns, not drugs. It's not about beliefs, Phil. It's, it's about facts. facts. Well, I have facts. You're but going on no, you video, don't. Phil. No, you don't. You, ha- you, 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 you have fake. Well, you have facts fake facts. Propaganda. You have <laughs> fake facts. I didn't. Did you? Uh, hold on a second now, Phil. Be quiet because I want everybody else to get a chance here too. Uh, 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 Ray, you watched the video he's talking about, right? Twice. Yes. Ta- ta- tell us about it. Okay. The video is made by some company uh, by a website called uh, MDs or Bad or something like that. And I went to their website. All they do is talk about uh, psychiatrists and all the bad things they're doing with drugs. That's all it's about. Nothing else. Okay. They had they found some psychiatrists that talked poor, badly about drugs. They talked about how the first thing they think about when they hear of a school shooting is, ah, what drug was that kid on? They found a few psychiatrists who are against drugs, and they put them on there, and they interviewed them, and they sprinkled their interviews in. Might have been out of context. You don't know. And they showed all these shootings over time, and they and and they said that these, psychi- these psychiatrists said, well, I think all of these people were probably on psychotropic drugs. There was no proof of any of them being on psychotropic drugs. They just said it was hidden by the media. Oh, it's okay? hidden by and, and it's also, that, you know, there are millions of people saved every year by psychotropic drugs. I know that for sure. And it, and, there's a and small also, percentage also, of people. Also, obviously, this was a biased documentary that yes, was trying was. to cut out any answers that wouldn't fit the narrative they wanted to portray. Yes, and there could have been other influences like... Like, what if the person hadn't taken any drugs? They might have been more violent. What other influences did the person have in their life? Is this kid so delusional that playing a video games, first-person shooter, maybe that was the thing that did it. Maybe it's the video games. Why can't you play the video games? I mean, there's so many things you could say that it was other than drugs. Yeah. You can blame and, and, I, I mean, to just say it's drugs... You it's can, ridiculous. You know it's gun. If you got rid of the guns, even if, no matter how berserk they went... They couldn't shoot anybody. You can blame a ton of things, whether it's drugs, whether it's the video games. The yeah. bottom line is I could go to the Dulles Town Center and usurp any kind of rules and buy a gun and walk out with it right there. Me too. Those are the things that are fucked up. So this is what I'm saying. It's easy to get a gun. It should be hard to get a a gun. That's all. It's difficult yeah. to get a gun. By the way, it's diff- it's difficult. It's difficult to get a gun in is it is a, it's a, it's a, in the country. It's a diff- It's difficult to have a gun in New York City. And last year, I think New York had the lowest murder rate they've had in years. Yes, but it's still a lot higher than no, many other. No, places. it's much lower than a lot of cities. It, 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 you know. Certainly lower than Chicago, that's for damn sure. But it, it's, it was quite low. It was, they were almost aghast at how low it was here last year. Yeah, and, and I, I listened to, you know, Dr. Laura? The yeah. yeah. I listened to her the other day. She was all pissed off about this, and she was blaming the FBI. And she, she said it's the FBI's fault. She said if you ban guns, people are going to build bombs 
or they're going to go in there with pipes, or they're going to go in there with knives. First of all, go in there with a knife. See how far you get. You're not going to kill people. Second of all, if same thing with a pipe. Not easy to build a bomb, okay? It's not easy. It's, it's tough to build a bomb. Or they're going to drive cars into buildings or do stuff like that. That's not the same kind of thing as going in with a weapon and just wiping people out. You can go to almost any. Oh, you can go to almost any gun show in America and buy guns. Yeah, I was shocked when you see the weapons that I could have walked out of there with. Oh, yeah. not in California. Well, that's what it should be in every state. Although Ray said, uh, didn't you say that you could? Uh, you researched it, and uh, that you could go in and buy a gun in thirty minutes. Was yeah, that- there's a there's a shop in San Carlos. They had that gun on sale on their website. The same exact gun. I could have yeah. gone down there and bought it. What do you mean? The gun that the kill the kid used? Yes, things? that assault rifle. What state? California. California. What? I'm, co- I'm so confused. I thought we couldn't do that. I thought you couldn't do it either. Did you but ask was- if there's a waiting period? No, I didn't. Bob- maybe there's a waiting period. Maybe there's a waiting period, but I mean, look, what do you got to wait? A couple weeks? Uh, 30 I mean, years, I think. Bobby, do, do they do a psychological, like, do they do a background check uh, on you? There's some sort of background check that's done with the Department of Justice. It's not psychological. Yeah, but have the, we had any school shootings in California? The, Bob had his hand up. Yeah. Let me let me go sure. to Bob. Bob, sorry. There's all this bullshit now about uh, the FBI failing. Does the FBI have enough people on their payroll to follow every single person that's getting sent their way? I think that, I, 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 I'll tell you something, Bob, and then I'll go to Rob. I think you have a good point there. However, um, uh, yes, the SB, FBI was remiss. I mean, they, they dropped the ball on this one, but so did everybody else. I mean, there were family members that dropped the ball. There were a lot of people that saw this coming. In fact, there were kids today who said when the guns started going off, we knew exactly who it was. Well, if, you know. if you're a Trump supporter— or a Republican right now bashing the FBI is what you want to be doing. In the end, we're only as a background check is only as good as the data that is to check. And if agencies like well, uh, one of the, uh, the, the 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 shootings that happened recently, the guy was ex-military. The military never reported that. Right. Guy, so you're only as good as the data that you have, right? It's not the FBI's fault necessarily. It might be in some cases, but what I'm saying is it's only as good as the data that's there. Well, they, the FBI was supposedly given uh, uh, straight facts on this guy, and uh, and I guess they did nothing with it. Tip line, that's correct. Some uh, uh, Somebody who knew this kid was worried yeah. he he heard him say a couple of times the, the, the guy you like, know what happened the kid the face- kid women the kid had written on his facebook page uh yeah. i want to be a professional classroom shooter or something right. to that extent school shooter, yeah and uh a school shooter and he uh he reported that to the fbi and the fbi took the information now the question is what happened after that point you, you, if you're the FBI, you just don't go out and arrest people because somebody said something on a on a Facebook page. You got to fully vet it before you uh, you deny somebody their constitutional rights. It's a, wait a minute, let me finish, Phil. You can I? Am I? Do I have your permission? Uh, you know? I'll think about it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the the fact of the matter is that uh, uh, they, they were in one of those positions where, I mean, it, there's a lot of stuff going on. This kid isn't the only thing they're dealing with. and But uh, what I hated was Trump, who came up with the feeling that the reason why this kid slipped through their fingers, why they slipped through the, uh, uh, the system, was because they were too busy going after him on Russia. Which and is I stupid, say, no, which is kids. stupid because the amount of people who are on the Russia case have nothing to do with going after kids like this. Can I say something? Yes. I have your permission? Okay. Yes. Uh, the, uh, if they would have said something like this on Facebook about Trump, there would have been an investigation. So if somebody would have made a threat uh, against Trump, for instance, there, uh, it would have been followed up and it would have been treated as a credible investigation. I don't see any reason why... These kinds of threats, uh, and you know, people know you don't yell fire in a crowded theater. You don't. Phil, Phil do it, it, the, the, the question is, and I think it was brought up by uh, Bob Eberth brought it up, and that is, 
How you know we think of the FBI? Oh, it's got billions of guys working. No, they have a finite amount of people working. And the question is, how do you uh, delegate those sources? And what do you what do you consider credible threats, and what don't you consider cre credible threats? This is a situation in which you look back at the FBI, you look back at the parents, the adoptive parents, you look back at the school people who knew about this kid, and you go, woulda, coulda, shoulda. But that doesn't mean these 17 people aren't dead. They, they knew there was 19 contacts with this kid and law enforcement. And uh, that all his teachers, uh, many teachers didn't even want him in the school or in their class. And he was, uh, wasn't he suspended? Yeah. Or, no, he was sent uh, to a school. He was sent to a school for disruptive ch uh, children. He was sent yeah. to a special school where they deal with these kind of kids. You know. Well, they clearly dropped the ball. They, they, they fessed up to it right away. They dropped the ball. That doesn't mean that we don't have problems in this country with the laws that are on the books surrounding firearms. And yeah, it comes, it comes around again. All these various things point to only one object, and that's a gun. Right. Okay. Well, I mean, the, that, uh, is the, that is the weapon of choice for killing people. The FBI tip line. Uh, supposedly there's about 200 FBI agents that work that. It's a separate building, mm -hmm. and they get about 2,000 tips per day. So, yes, they're getting, they're getting a lot of information, but, you know, so, uh, something like this uh, is, and especially since it's been seen in so many multiple places, warranted follow-up. And, uh, and yeah. for them to fall yeah. in the sword, I think they were right into it. Again, it's woulda, coulda, shoulda. Yes, right. uh, Bob Ebert. How many of those 2,000 uh, tips they got are just as valid and just as scary as that one kid? I don't know. Uh, but, you know, just to just give you an idea what the ratio is between people answering the phone, taking the tips, and uh, the amount of tips that are that are coming in, uh, that that's why I brought it up. I don't know how many of them are valid. Hmm. Well, I, you know, I just think that we're, we're you know, it, it, what we're doing is what we always like to do, and that is when there's a problem, certain people in this country, most of them Republicans, have a tendency to blame the victims. And that's really what we're doing here. I mean, let's face it, uh, uh, these kids needed protection. They need it now, and they need to be heard, and they're being told by the state of Florida, sorry, we don't want to listen to you. Hey, Phil, are guns more important than these kids' lives? Yeah. All these school shootings, starting back with Virginia Tech, New I, Tech. I, I don't think, uh, I, you see, I don't agree with the original premise that the, that the center uh, focus is guns. Uh, I think it's something else. What is it? I, I said drugs. Well, uh, no, 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 no. Now you see that that's that, that's a diversion. See, this, Phil. this is my my opinion based on the things that I've read, and don't think it's propaganda. Uh, I okay. think that it's that it's people. Yeah, but you uh, read you, you read against. selectively. I, you read hmm? selectively. You read selectively and read those things which feed into your own prejudices. Well, when you try to fight the psychiatric uh, uh, lobby. You're fighting something with millions and millions of dollars, big pharma, all of these things. Uh, they're they're there. They're making a lot of money on this stuff. I'm sure it's helped. And many what people. about the gun manufacturers? And what about the NRA? I, I'm not saying that they're not as complicit when it comes to trying to influence the lawmakers. Okay, that, you so know, it just happen. In the meantime, more kids will die. More schools will get shot up because there's this face-off between gun lobbyists and the pharma lobbyists, right? So let's okay. just let it sit because everybody's getting paid. Everybody's getting rich. Everybody's getting their campaigns funded. In the meantime, we've got kids that are dying in school. I can't, one other thing before I uh, – for instance, all of you, if you were asked to turn in – if you had a weapon, an AK-47 or an M-15, 16 – uh, uh, AR-15, if you were asked to turn it in by the government, I am sure every one of you, including me, to a, to a man, would turn it in. 
If if I was if I if the law of the land was turn it in, I turn it in. Do you think that the bad guys out there that are running around uh, in their cars, uh, shooting up the neighborhoods, do you think they're going to turn them in? They, they all they all drive around in cars, shooting up neighborhoods. It's, uh, well, if uh, you lived in Oakland, uh, 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 well, that, well not, every, every not everybody day. lives in Oakland. Bob Eberth, yes. We're getting into that bullshit of the good guy with a gun. Yeah. Yep. I think Let's that's... have three guys with guns at a school shooting, and the police come in. Who the fuck do they shoot if all Everybody. the three good guys have guns out? It's just what I said in the promo that you officers. made, Alex. Yeah? Just give everybody a gun. Put guns in classrooms. Give every kid a gun. Let everybody be armed so there'll never be another 17 massacre again. Just give everybody a fucking gun. Is that, That's the answer then. It's There should be school uh, uh, authorities, uh, whether, uh, whether it's a, a school cops or, or something like that. They need metal detectors. But I interrupted Vernon. He had his hand up a long time ago. And I, uh, yeah, Vernon. They have pharmaceuticals in other countries, Phil. They have crazy people in other countries. We are the only civilized country on the face of this earth Thank you. that has all of this gun violence. Okay, Vernon, Period. there was a school in Russia that they shot up. I think 200 kids were killed, <laughs> uh, and, and uh, you know, it, it was shot up. Uh, you know, we're not, you know, in Russia, do you think most of those people are allowed to own guns? They're not even allowed begin to with, books. Uh, to begin with, tell us exactly about that That's situation, Phil, because case, I think Phil, I don't. This is happening 200, as an epidemic I know, no, in this no. Country. But what school was that, and what was the situation? Because I don't remember a school being hit. Uh, yeah, it was a school. Uh, it was uh, uh, about four years ago, uh -huh. uh, well, uh, and I don't, you know, those Russian names of those towns and I, cities. I think are, that happened to be an opera house where it happened, if I'm not uh, mistaken. It's like, I don't no, think it was a school. Look it up. Well, you'll find something. Russian school, 200 people dead. You'll find it yeah. somehow. Well, in yeah. 2004, there was a group of Islamic militants that took over a school and yeah. held everyone yes. hostage. Yes, but I but don't it think... it was Islamic militants. Oh, okay. And what, oh, they were Chechens. And, yeah, and militants. how, yeah, they were Chechens and how they got, got killed. Got wait a minute, wait a minute. How the kids right. got killed wasn't by the Chechens. It was by the uh, Russian police. Yeah, because they invaded. Running in and getting them. Yeah. Well, do you yeah, okay, think so so if, you're you're wrong about your facts, police. Phil. You're wrong if about your facts. If they weren't sitting ducks, they're sitting ducks there. And it, uh, it's sad that they have to go to maximum security school like prison. Well, they have had to do that in yeah. the inner cities for a long time. Yes, yeah. this is the world you want to live in because everybody has to have a gun. I'd like to know how many times that good guy has used the gun to stop murders in addition instead of the out the other way where the bad guy okay. shoots up 17 people I, I agree there there are statistics out there they're very hard to find we've yeah. been we've been joined by uh by uh get a little more in the center of the picture there if you can right. yeah. because because uh, okay, you're, you're at the edge picture and you get cut off a little bit yes renee's joined us yes renee you know this is not against phil it's against everybody who thinks like phil <laughs> it, let's, let's, let's do this. Which I, I want every NRA member to say, which child do you never want to hear from again on your cell phone? Which kid of yours are you willing to give up for a piece of metal? Now, if I open my phone, you will still see all of Marty's contact information in there because I can't bring myself to take it out. Yeah. I'm not a mom. I didn't give birth to anything, but I can tell you now, those mothers and those fathers are going through a hell you people don't ever want to see. So my question to you, which fucking kid of yours can I call to say that you never want to talk to them again? There's your gun, Phil. Right on. Bravo. So, look. Which kid uh, are you going to give really up? It's a emotionally charged thing. But, you know, here you have <laughs> one guy out of seven or eight that is that has a different opinion. Now, uh, you've disrespected my opinion. I, I absolutely, I absolutely your dis disrespect your opinion. There's nothing about your opinion I can respect, Phil. Well, you know, uh, there, there has been a lot that's, of... That's uh, the same as saying, that's the same as saying, 
Uh, well, it's not time to discuss this right uh, now. That's I've what they say. I, it's, hey, it's, I was, the, you know, I was the first one to play the gun, the, the gun yeah, shots. Yeah, it was very funny. Yeah, it yeah. was. No, yeah. no, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. There was nothing funny about that. I thought it was disgusting. Yeah. Uh, and just so, so all of you people who, and I'm gonna, I guess, to um, the gentleman in Palo Alto, yeah. Ray, right, right. Yeah. And, and anybody who's ever been on an antidepressant. They don't just give them to you, and you don't go through the first one perfectly. Ray right. said it himself. He yeah. had to go through many just to find the one that works for I had him. to go through two or three until I got to Zoloft, yeah. which worked for me. Yeah. So the bullshit that okay. the NRA is trying to sell you about, it's the drugs. Verna no, you don't just hand out drugs like that and say, go away. Ver Matter of fact, my insurance company won't let me do talk there I met won't let me take antidepressants without the talk therapy component yeah uh, uh, Ver Vernon has Vern. his hand up Vernon this argument about uh, the best way to stop a bad guy with a gun is a good guy with a gun yeah well in my city last summer a young man had just returned from his honeymoon with his 20 something wife and he was accosted in a very nice section of our city by some young thugs. And as the young thugs were running away, he whipped out his weapon, being the good guy with a gun, and shot at them, and they turned around and killed him. I guess yeah. he missed. But, and uh, wait, wasn't there and, a and yet you make another joke about it, Phil. That was actually had a gun, and they killed him, and he killed him, right? There was a security guard at this high school. Yeah, the... What I also believe about the drugs is that they yeah. give the drugs to these kids, the and then they reach a drugs. certain age, or they don't. You know, you to take, take a, you take something like the drugs, and you just you just That's hammer away at it. No, because and, and, it's not. Know, it's the only yeah. argument you think you have, and it's a f pretty flimsy one because it's it only, doesn't get to the core of the problem. You see, the core of the problem for you is you think it's the guns. I don't think it's the guns. I think it's the gun mentality in this country okay nice, Vern. i like that Vern's going ape <laughs> by the way bob's had his hand up and i don't want yeah. to lose all feeling to it gun control is pretty simple if you have to cock it to shoot it it's fine if you can hold the trigger and it kills 19 people it's not fine i think that's a good that's a that's a decent assumption you know <laughs> Uh, 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 I mean, personally, I don't like guns at all, and I wish there were no guns at all. Uh, Scott, you haven't been saying anything. Anything you want to say about any of this? Well, everyone thinks that this kid was mentally damaged, right? Yeah. Had a mental issue. And Phil says, well, it's because he was on drugs. Well, I'm just saying it's a good thing that this kid wasn't Muslim because everyone would have said, oh, he's a radical. He's a terrorist. This yeah. kid was just a terrorist. That's all he was. He was a terrorist. He was a white supremacist, and he killed a bunch of people. Mm -hmm. He's he's a Republican. He's a Trump supporter. That's <laughs> what it is. He's a terrorist. He's not mentally ill. He's not on drugs. You know, you're right. If he was a Muslim, they'd call him call it an act of terror. Because he wasn't a Muslim, they just they don't call it an act of terror. He, you're he, absolutely right about that, Scott. I, I would like to say that the reason the NRA is actually trying to pick this health, uh, the mental health component of this is because they know, or somebody should know, you should all know this, that mental health is a component of health care. And since we have no health care, having a conversation about mental health and guns is ridiculous because those people who need mental health help can't get it because we don't have health care. So it's another one of those things that the NRA is just throwing out there so they don't go chase your tail thing. Uh, Rob's got his hand up. Wasn't it one of the first things that Mr. Trump did when he entered the White House was to repeal the mental health uh, rules that uh, Obama put in place? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It Absolutely. Have guns. It'll, yeah. <laughs> Sure. So you, you call it mental health, but if you're not going to help 
people who have men. So even your own argument is flawed in that, oh, it's mental health, but we don't want to pay for mental health. That was part of his de abomination, abomination of America, in which he uh, attempted to just undo everything. No matter yeah, what it was that Trump, uh, that uh, Obama did, and one of the things he did was exactly that kind of law, making a heavier background check for mental stability to have a gun. Yep. And Donald Trump, one of his very first things. Yep. Signed it out. So when the Republicans say stuff to you guys, I want you to ask them which kid they're going to turn up, they want to say goodbye to for the rest of their life. Ask them that. Which kid are they willing to give up because they think their gun is so much more important? Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Ah, boy. I mean, uh, this is, you know, it. Uh, the other day, night, uh, Tom Yamaguchi wrote us and said, boy, this is a great show. I wish, I wish we had more like this. And I said, no, I don't. <laughs> You know, I I wish we had a boring show every night because we didn't have this kind of thing to discuss. But it, it and it's it's a discussion that it you know we're yelling about it now. Those kids in Florida are yelling about it now. There are some people in Congress who are yelling about it, and it'll go on for about another week, and then we're back to the same old shit, right? I'm Until, not sure I, it's going to be that way. I'm really hoping that these kids are just well, the, uh, the kids may. The, the, I call bullshit. Well, the kids, I the kids may bullshit. be our, the kids may be our savior in this whole thing. That the kids may just start a movement in this country if they take, say, we're going to Washington. Every other kid in America, join us in Washington. I think you might start seeing kids going to Washington and holding a demonstration, and that would be very effective because uh, you're seeing kids do it. You know, you're not seeing well, a bunch of uh, adults doing it. Did you see the report? on uh cnn tonight about they had two kids on uh one of the kids names hub or something like the hob uh on he, he was on being and 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 the right wing is saying that they're actors they're saying they're <laughs> actors they're calling them tragedy actors or i call bullshit yes it uh, is uh, the uh, uh, thing and you know who liked the tweet donald trump, trump jr trump. phil trump jr. has his hand up uh, I, I try to find something that gave a reason why uh, uh, Trump uh, signed the uh, bill that uh, allowed this mental health thing. And, you know, you can you can parse anything. Anyway. It's an executive order, Phil, not a bill. I, OK, it's executive I, order. Yeah, I don't you know, I don't care what it was, uh, but no, but this, you should this, care what it was, because there's a difference between a bill and, a, and an this executive is, this order. Is a regulation that potentially deprived 75 to 80,000 people on their right, not based on what they had done, but on the basis of being classified by the government in a certain way. The fact that these people have impairments did not inherently mean that they were dangerous to themselves or others and needed. To Who, be kept wrote away from huh? Who wrote that? Who wrote that? This uh, Trump I, I certainly didn't because it's, it's it, in free minds and free markets. Uh, well, you, you know, you, you you go looking until you find something that will Every, agree uh, with your with CNN, your. If it's from CNN, it's not going to be pro. You well, know, uh, so all I'm, I'm saying is all I'm something. saying is you keep looking for stuff online that will justify your misguided feelings. I, I yes. Let's let Tom Yamaguchi say hello. He He's did it got, because Obama did it. Right. Yeah. The black uh, I, I, don't, yeah. I don't necessarily agree with that. Yeah. <laughs> Bullshit. Look at the record. Look at the record. Yeah. Look, <laughs> hey, hey, Tom Yamaguchi just joined us. Sensibility has entered the house. Yes, Tom. <laughs> no, anger is. <laughs> uh, I really wish you'd stop taking my comment out of context. What I had written was actually, I appreciated the fact that you actually had a participant who was there uh, as a part of the event and yes. could report about what he was saying. What his yeah. had nothing to do with with the actual subject matter. Of course, I I I, I, I don't want to. Oh, have I did, I wasn't even implying that you wanted that. <laughs> You know, no. Well, that's no, that's what you were saying. No, what so I was saying, what I was saying is that you, you, you said that you know this is really a great discussion. We, there should be more like these, and I just was simply saying I hope we don't have to I have another one. Okay. That, well, that was know. taking that once again. That was no. that was taking it out of context and and really uh, really misconstruing what well, I was well, saying. Well, I didn't want to do that. I just, actually, that wasn't and my I, I'll tell you I'll, what I really believe is. The really value of these panels is the potential 
for someone who is in an area where there's a yeah. news event. Let, let's explain to Phil. Share their personal let, let, Let's explain to Phil because he wasn't here on Friday night, but we had a guy who lives five miles from that school call the show. Yeah, yeah. Jerry. Yeah. Yes, it was Jerry. And and and, and I really appreciated his, his input. And I, as I said, we, we, I really like to have more shows like that. Instead of someone coming in with the, you know, with, with you know, uh, half baked opinions, you know that uh, that you know uh, that you know really have no nothing related to, to their own personal experience. This is the kind of show I want to have more of. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead and and hang up. I just wanted to. Uh, well, to, listen. To, I don't to, want you to be mad yeah. at me. I don't want you to be mad at me because I wasn't trying to. I wasn't trying okay. to misrepresent you. I was just trying oh. to make a point. Oh. That's what actually happened. <laughs> well, please but then I, let me I, I, let me apologize to you. Then. I have to set the record straight. But anyway, I'll, I'll let you guys go back to your your conversation, okay? And I'll call again another night. Okay. Bye bye. Thanks for bye. calling. All right. All right. I I I didn't want to misrepresent him. Uh, apparently, he thought I did, so I don't feel good about that. But what the hell? Uh, anyway, yes, uh, Bob. I live pretty much in the middle of nowhere. I'm in upstate New York in a village. And on the news here the other day, mm -hmm. uh, the nearest town that I can go shopping is 15 miles away. Mm -hmm. It's called Pulteney, Vermont. Mm -hmm. And one of the kids in Pulteney was planning on a shooting. And from what I understand, some kid in New England caught it on Facebook, turned him in, and they were able to stop that shooting. But that shooting would have been 10, 15 miles from where I am now. Yeah. So, I mean, so some of these things don't fall through the cracks. Right. I think that's what we're trying to say. Were you, By the way, Renee, were you trying to call from another? another? I was trying to show you the sunset, but it didn't work. <laughs> yeah, no, it won't, it won't let you sign in twice, I don't think. Is well, the other day it worked, but I don't remember what I was... Working yeah. on. So yeah. the other statement is, is Phil, you scared little monster, you. The United States government doesn't deem you mentally ill. They're not qualified for that. A doctor has to say whether or not you need medication. So no, you know, desk pushing person can can say that you're ill and can say that you don't get a gun. Well, then maybe that's why Trump signed that thing to law. Well, not in the law, but made, what did you call it, Vernon? It was an uh, executive order. Executive order. An EO. By the way, any of those things can be overturned if you want to take them to court. I mean, the fact that he writes an executive order just means he says it shall be so. And then, of course, we've had a lot of executive orders that recently have been overturned by courts. So. Oh, and did you see that the United States Supreme Court will not hear the California law with the gun restrictions on it? They said it stands and fuck you, NRA. Oh, really? Why? And why? We, have, we have a 10, 10 day hold period. I just looked. It's only 10 days. Yeah, but, but, but the reason for that, I would imagine, on the part of the Supreme Court is states' rights, right? Yeah. I, you know, I don't. So, and this is another thing. This is another piece of crap that the Republicans put out. I don't think that the that your little brats in the state of Montana deserve less protection than your little brats in Virginia. So <laughs> the deal is this My is kids. not a state by state issue. This is a national issue. And this is what the kids are trying to get across. And the issue, the other issue is, is how many, all of these, what the NRA is saying, we want, you need to put up, metal detectors, you need to get security guards, which by the way we killed, or that guy killed, and you need to do X, Y, and Z to make your kids safe. Guess what, NRA? That should come out of your pocket. Those metal detectors, three for every school, sure, you pay for them. The security guards for every school, absolutely, you pay for them. Let the NRA put their money where their mouth is and run like little Freddy cats if they are. I'm just, you know, I said the other night, and it is appalling that we, the people, are more protective of their guns than they are of their kids. Yeah, that's uh, what it's, you know, that's yeah. really what it becomes. It is, 
And we are, you know, we're the only country in the world that feels this way. I mean, we're, um, people in other countries are scratching their heads at our behavior. How about Switzerland? What about, now, see, what aboutism? There you go with your what aboutism again. You're, you're going to fight an argument. It, 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 Switzerland has nothing to do with us. Every citizen in Switzerland is issued a weapon. Because they and didn't have, there's a reason for that. Do you know what the reason is, Phil? That's their military. Don't remember. But because, every they don't, citizen, because they don't, because they don't, because they, they are the biggest fucking liars in the world. They have said we don't have a military. But what they do is everybody is armed so that if they have an insurrection that comes along, everybody can take up arms and go take care of it. But they don't have they, a military. But they all have guns. And they don't have this but, problem. No, but again, this is what about ism. Also, Switzerland is in America. Oh. Also, the mentality and of Swiss people is different than the mentality of Americans, Phil. No other Phil. country. No, no. no other country. I said, what about Switzerland? Every single citizen there is armed. It's what about ism. Uh, that's you, how you, you fight. That's how you fight your arguments you all the time. Well, what about Obama? Well, what about Hillary? Well, what about hey. Trump? Well, well maybe know. because Switzerland is doing it right. They're not and stupid I, there like they are here. What are they right. doing they, differently? They, obviously, they, obviously they, they can be. Like, what obviously. are they doing differently? I, I want to know. They don't have Republicans. They educate their people. <laughs> what, wait, what'd you say, Scott? <laughs> I said they don't have Republicans. <laughs> They're all Republicans. But Bob Ebert said it right. They they educate their kids. They uh, to both uh, through the the younger years. They do the four years if they need it. They go higher than that. It, they are they are the leading smart people. Some of the leading smart people on the planet. They're the tallest people on the planet. It all bodes to intelligence, and we're probably... Well, I think there's more to it than that. You know, somebody said that uh, uh, geography is destiny, and I think it's very true. And if you've ever ever been to Switzerland, Phil? Yes, Yes, several times. So you know that it's a different geography than here, and that it's not a very dense, popul densely populated country. And there's a different. Wait a minute, let me finish. There's a different set of of rules that takes place when you have a city like New York that's densely populated. People are going to go crazier than if you've got people living in the country. Uh, Yes, Rob. So I have a couple of questions about Switzerland. Number one. Do people carry these weapons or are they are issued them in their home? They're in their home. Okay, so nobody's carrying. Number two, what age do they get these weapons? They're not born and the weapons given to them. I think it's 18. And they must have to go through all kinds 18. of training, right, to get it. Yeah, they do get training. Okay, so we don't have any of that here. We should. I'm into that, uh, again, should. We don't. We can't pass anything when it comes to guns. As soon as you mention guns. If you tomorrow, a- Phil, if tomorrow... You suddenly said, hey, well, everybody should have to have training and have to uh, uh, be insured and all of that before they can have a gun, which are things I think you would not disagree with. The NRA would fight that. Right. I t- well, the NRA they would fight, would fight that. anything. Let, let me tell you what. I heard a thing from that L- Lapriere uh, yeah. guy after LaPierre. the shooting. Like if, if you're going to know who your, who your gun Hitler is, you should know well, how to pronounce his name. Uh, well, anyway... He said uh, that he doesn't care, uh, uh, you know, what uh, they they say or they try to do. He does not want one chink in the armor against guns, and that's his job as an NRA leader. Uh, no, but it's is, not. It's not his is, job as an NRA leader. His job is, uh, as any kind of leader of any org- of any group is to try and hit a moral high ground. But he said, he said there's no more reason to, to protect uh, the, the first amendment is the same as the second. You don't yeah. need to have insurance to have the first amendment. It, 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 the, the second amendment. You have to have insurance a, to have a car. Uh, but yes, but I mean, hold on a second. Uh, J- Jack Bishop is just joining us. Are you there, Jack? Yeah, right here, Alex. Turn on your camera, would you? Oh, let's see. I thought it was on. Oh, let, let me. Oh, no, it's not. Let me. That's uh, funny, okay. Alex. You're trying to talk to Republicans about values. Yeah. We know where their values are. Yeah. Hookers, and also, center your face a little bit, Jack, so we can see you better. All right. How's yeah. that? Is that better? No, you got to move the camera. All right, I'll move Let's the see, camera. See, see, look and see where your face is. There. Uh, 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 well, that that didn't do much. <laughs> 
Well, maybe if I do this, is that better? Because it may be a little high. No, but you, you can see me. That's good well, enough. You, you, you look like Kilroy was here. Just your yeah, nose well, and your it's eyes. Been like that for a month. Huh? It's been like that for a month. Oh yeah, because you call a show all the time, right? Yeah. Here we go. Now he raises his head. Top of his head. Right. I don't care. Anyway, what were you going to say? Who, who was saying something here? Jack. Jack. The thing that I find so amazing about this conversation, I'm probably the only person here that ever had a family member killed by an idiot with a gun. So I've got a vested interest in all of this because I had to stand over my 23-year-old nephew's coffin and deliver a eulogy about a kid who was getting off a bus coming home from work one day and a 16-year-old boy shot and killed him. Now, Phil says, what about Switzerland? You know, we used to have a mental health safety net in this country. Anybody remember that? Mm -hmm. but, but All our hail the great leader of the Republican Party, Reagan. He was uh, a, uh, a governor when he did that. It doesn't matter. He was the it, leader. It, and empty, he it emptied out the mental world. hospitals. Yeah. And it rolled across our country. Yep. And, and I remember in San Francisco when they uh, rolled them out and they were walking like zombies up and down Van Ness Avenue. The kid, uh, the kid that shot my nephew was not a zombie, but everybody who knew this guy including my sister, who at that time was working with young people, said we all knew he was disturbed, but nobody knew what to do for him and how to get him help. Because this happened not in the 80s, but in the late 1990s, early 2000s. And Phil, no, it wasn't gang related, in case you want to play that card. I didn't say a word. I, I know. I was going to say it for you. Get it out of the way. Get, the get it out of the way before he got to it. <laughs> Look, you know, I, I didn't figure Jack's relatives were, were gangbangers. No, but you probably yeah. figured the kid who shot him was. Yeah. You probably. Yeah. No, Look, you know what our literacy kid with a gun? You know what? I No, he stole the gun from out of his father's bureau drawer. Mm. And his father should have been held culpable. I believe, uh, but, not, in the, but, but not with you're, the laws that we had then, and not with no. the laws that we have now. Look, no. look, wait a minute, Phil. Phil, quit blaming everything except for the fact that the problem exists. I mean, you're trying to avoid the problem by sh well, by no, no, so-called no, no. shooting should, around it with what about isms, with uh, oh, he probably did this, and the father shouldn't have done that. Hey. All these are woulda, coulda, shouldas. The See, fact is, what can we do to stop this from happening? I tell you what we can do. Bullets uh, should have a like a micro registration in them. Uh, you can only use a bullet once. Once it goes through, it gets deformed. But there, there could be oh, uh, yeah. just like they yeah. do to diamonds, mm -hmm. uh, like this little micro can I number. Can ask you a question? Number. How much would that? How much would that add to the cost of a bullet? I, I don't think it would add <laughs> much. Thing. Who cares? But and what, and what good would it do? And by the way, I mean, and by the way if you made if you, you made people limit, if you made people if you made people use bullets with a tracing device on them, then only the good guys would have bullets with tracings on them. Hey, hey, can I uh, say that? You could load your own. Yeah, you could load your no, own. No, even if you load your own, you get the 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 bullet itself. Uh, you don't mold it yourself. Those are the days when they, you know, uh, when they were uh, doing muskets. Now you you buy the bullet, you have the casing, or you buy the casing, or you reuse the casing. You put a primer in it, but that bullet can have a tracing number that is registered to the person who bought it, and oh, that right. would make more personal mm -hmm. responsibility. How, how practical? Are, how practical is that, Phil? I, it's it's practical enough that it would save lives. No, no. <laughs> it, it, the issue is, is, is this is a post issue. I mean, we're trying to keep the kids from dying as opposed care, to Renee. tracing the bullets hey, to find out who killed them. You guys don't really care what the gun lobby would do to make guns safer. You just don't sure. want Sure. No, no, no. Let's, let's hear it, Bill. Uh, let, let's hear it. 
you your, have an agenda. Your gun yeah. lobby won't support you. You know what I haven't heard right. once from Phil tonight is, I'm just really sorry for those 17 people who are dead. Of course I am. No, but you haven't said it. Phil. Well, should, you haven't yeah. even indicated it. I did the other day. No, you didn't indicate it. And in fact, you obliterated it by that uh, 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 that sound, sound effect. effect that you played at the beginning of the show. Oh, that- so sorry, all you snowflakes got. Uh, oh jeez. Oh jeez. Oh my God, that's disgusting. Yeah. You have, you have kids, right? I got a kid in high school. Phil, I gotta go. No, no, Thank don't, don't so go, Ray. Ray. Ray, Ray, don't go. All right. Your, your, your I, voice I, is sensitive. I don't hear these people who have children. It must be difficult for them to hear the fact that their neighbor thinks that their gut metal is more important than their offspring. Yeah. That well, let me say something to Ray. Let me say something to Ray. Ray, I'll t- I, I, let me say something to Ray. The reason I don't want you to leave is you are a voice of sensibility, and I like having you here. It okay, may, Alex. It, thank you. It, it and, may, and, I, and I like Phil. I, I, just, I just don't get it. I, I can't. I can't. I, I can't understand what it is. I can't. I mean, I feel listen, like. Listen, I've logical. known Phil. I've known Phil for more years almost than I've been alive. And that's. And and uh, uh, I, I'm a friend of Phil's. I like Phil. You know, I know Phil personally as being a very kind, decent person. That is not the way he pulls himself off on this show. And sometimes I want to just say, go fuck yourself, Phil. In fact, I do. You know, uh, but 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 I think I think that there are times like when he played the bullets at the beginning of the show that he loses all sense of what is proper and what isn't proper. And I think he's a better person than that. And that disappoints me, Phil. All right. Well. Sorry that it offended anyone. Really, it wasn't my it wasn't my uh, intention to offend. It was my intention to create a little levity in a, in a time when everybody there, is you know is so emotionally it, uh, charged. There are times in which you know levity is asked for as a matter of relieving the burden of the stress and the pain you're feeling. But it, this is not one of those instances. This is not right. one of those cases. And believe me, I'm the first guy to be indulging in bad taste when it comes to something like that. But right. uh, yes, uh, Jack. Phil, th- there is no levity, no satire in a dead kid. It's, you know. No, uh, and, and, and you know, maybe it's my graveyard humor you know, as a cop, you see things, and sometimes if you don't joke about it. But how long has it been since you were a cop, and how long? Did it take twenty it years. All and right. You do something for twenty years. Uh, uh, you know, uh, forty hours a month for twenty years. You you find that um, uh, there are certain things uh, that people do just to keep their sanity. And Let's talk uh, about Switzerland for just a moment. Sure. You know, do you know what the average literacy rate in this country is? It's God. low. God. It's about, you know, about 75%. Costa Rica, which is a third world country, has a 94% literacy rate. Well, I, I don't no. want to go and well, blame let, will you let will you let, will you let him finish his thought? Sure. And, and you just said that Renee and some other folks on this panel may be brainwashed because we have an agenda. You gun packers have an agenda too and don't lie about it. No, of course. My you know, I have an agenda. I use my argument. You guys have an agenda. You use your argument. You'll never listen to my argument. And you know what? I'm I, not gonna listen to yours. I'm willing to listen to yours if it makes some damn sense. No, but you'll you'll use you'll it, use whatever you can to say that it doesn't make sense. Yes, and I challenge you to do the same thing. Attack, 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 and then we get up and we start the next day and we attack some more. There's right. scars enough to go around for everybody. But remember this, it only took one of these incidents in Australia for them to do something about it. Yes, and that, that yeah, incident in Australia in, uh, was that, not the Lynch chocolate. Our crazies? No, that, that incident in Australia happened in 1996, and that was not the Lint chocolate. There was still a shooting, a mass shooting in Australia, and that was the Lint chocolate, and it happened years after all those guns were confiscated. Uh, it, it was a stony point or something. You as a cop know that it takes some time to get the scum uh, uh, let me, off let me, the street. Let me 
put a little sensibility into this discussion. We have a great fear in this country about ISIS and about terrorism and about ISIS doing things in this country. And yet most of the mass shootings that have taken place in this country, one of the, the, most of the mass obliteration events that have taken place in this country make ISIS look stupid by comparison because ISIS isn't a factor in any of them. A few of them had to do with people who were influenced by ISIS, but they weren't members of ISIS. The fact is that we are the worst enemies of ourselves. We are the worst obliterators of ourselves. And we put, we put these weapons in the hands of these deranged people who have easy access to them. The guy in, in uh, Las Vegas had a hotel room full of these items. You know, it wasn't like he just went out and bought one. He bought a whole arsenal of them. Yes, it was Bob. The up in the hotel. <laughs> the lady yeah. up in the corner there, she put up a sign that said facts. Yeah. Yeah. It's Our so government yeah. is not allowed to study gun shootings because the NRA has bought out the Republicans. Uh, so we can't that. get any real facts. Bob, I, I don't see that as a fact. That's your opinion. No, yeah. that yeah. is a fact. Yeah, where's yeah. It, where's this fact come from? Well, the fact so, is, the amount of money the NRA spent on on all of these politicians right, over the last years. The legislation says that the CDC cannot investigate gun fatalities and shootings. So, speaking of what Bob just said, when when I went on Google for about five or seven minutes while you guys were talking, I could not find any gun statistics past 2016. I couldn't find anything for 17 or 18, and that's on Trump. Those statistics need to be published, and I agree yes. with Bob. Ray? And I will say, Renee, that's true. I looked everywhere today, and I could yeah. not find anything in the last two years. It just doesn't exist. Exactly. It's, there's nothing mm -hmm. anywhere. Wow. Yeah, and, and I went to three search engines looking for it, and not one of the d data pulled back was anything other than 2016, 15, 14, or 13, and that was it. So Bob is correct. He's, this, at, he's, this, he's Bob, we're not getting you this are correct. You are correct, but that it seems that Congress extended a ban on CDC research on gun violence, and this was done back in uh, October of 2015, long before Trump. Uh, 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 but, 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 while, but, but while the Republicans had Congress, yeah, but you can't blame Trump for no, certain. Not. We're not blaming. We're not Trump blaming on Trump. That. We're blaming the Republicans blaming in Congress. Republicans. Congress and the NRA. The NRA used to represent gun owners, and it was hostily taken over by radicals. Yeah, that happened now quite a if, few years back. Put it this way: if enough people feel as you do, and not just you, Bob, but everybody here, uh, you know, they they would make a uh, a way of uh, changing the Constitution and eliminating the and eliminating the Second Amendment. No, now, they won't. You're you know, full of crap. They, they, I call bullshit. Now, uh, mm -hmm. you know, with the women's movement, it, it was very close to uh, becoming a constitution. Amendment, and if you and if you want to change the Constitution, there are ways of doing it. But right now, it's the law of the land, and what the NRA is doing is they're protecting. It that is a right. very. It is a, first of all. Let me the what? Second Amendment, Phil. Let me say the this. Second Amendment does did not does not protect individuals from owning guns. But that says a well regulated militia the well, Supreme well, let me said, say that it is a very badly written amendment okay because wait a minute, hold on a second can i finish what i am saying please okay. uh, it is it is a very badly written amendment one that should have been rewritten years ago that has been interpreted interpret interpreted <laughs> interpreted in any in any manner of ways by different Supreme Courts. There was one in 1935 that said it's a collective right, not an individual right. And then the Supreme Court turned around at a later date and said it's an individual right, not a you know. So 
But isn't that the last one? No, but it, it's badly, it's badly written. And the fact of the matter is there is a codification, there is a qualification clause in that amendment that says in order to maintain a well-ordered militia, then you can have the guns. Well, I'm, I'm, huh? I'm all for uh, having a, a not having every individual get a gun just because they want to, but it is the law and it is their right. It is a and question. It is a law. Right as the it it is a law that probably will re once you get a bunch of right left wingers in there, we'll probably reinterpret it, the Second Amendment all over again. In 2009 and 2010, for four months, Obama had a uh, had both the House and the Senate. For how many months? How, ma how many months? He couldn't change it because the Republicans blocked everything. They filibustered everything. That's right. Well, they could have used the same the same deal that the Republicans well, well, did uh, on... Uh, uh, Jack uh, has his hand up. Here. Phil said something that I got to say I agree with. What? Yes. I mean, you know, I, I almost had the heart attack that I didn't have seven years ago. <laughs> but Phil said that it's, uh, you know, that if enough people felt that something should be done, it'll get done. And I point this out to you, Mr. Myers. These 15, 16, and 17-year-old kids in two years are going to be able to vote. Yep. That's good. And, and as they move through the society, having, in some cases, been scared out of their little cell phones, <laughs> don't be surprised if they're not real serious about changing some of this shit that we fact, all if the law of the land to change. If the law of the land changes, I'll be the well, first. Well, the law one of the land, as I see it, isn't that you can have the right to bear arms. What? Say that again. The, the law of the land, so far as I see it, as so far as it, I read it, and I can read like anybody else, doesn't say that I can. I, I personally have the right to bear arms. I have well, the right to bear arms as part of a well-ordered militia. I don't belong to a militia, neither do you, Phil, in spite of the fact that you say you were a policeman. Uh, that is not the, considered a militia any longer. Uh, nobody on this panel is part of a well-ordered militia. They don't exist any longer. And the reason is because that Second Amendment was written for a specific time, and I'm telling you right now, if the framers of the Constitution were alive today, they would disagree with the way we're implementing it. I, I don't agree with that. And I've heard the, 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 the argument made many times. Well, you had those months where you had a Democratic president, Democratic Congress. You forgot a little detail there. They were spending a lot of time digging this country out of a hole that was created by the previous Republicans. And by the time they got that worked out, they lost the House. It took so, six years. If really felt that this was the number one problem Number one problem was our banks were failing. When the banks There's, were failing, oh, uh, believe me, if, if a problem like the banks failing existed, the gun thing would take a second. So the economy the and money was more important to the Democrats. No, than it was more. It was more important. It was more right. important. It was more important to people who were losing their homes in this country. Yeah, you, you had may remember losing every day. You forgot. You wake up. It six. took us. It took six years to keep us. Oh, good puppy! It took six years <laughs> to keep us into a depression. They fought really hard to keep us just in a recession. We could have easily slipped into a depression, and every one of you little fucking Republicans you forget are. that point. Did you hear her teeth clench? Oh yeah, I saw them. Yeah. Phil, right according to some, in two thousand eight. We came to within three days of being in a depression. Yes. Now, now, you know, I'll tell you my own story. I bought some General Motors stock when it hit $3. I said, how the hell can GM go bankrupt? Did. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know, I thought I was going to be the the brilliant member of my family with the stock market. I'm going to buy this stock at $3 and it's going to rebound. Hell, even if if it only goes up to 10, I've, I've done better with that than I did with my serious stock when I had it. But, but what happened? Lost all of that money because we were just that close to going down the toilet. What happened to and, your serious stock? 
I got out of it before it got flaky. <laughs> well, you see, I mean, I wish I'd bought it at five cents. Yeah. I went no, through, that's, that's nothing. I went well, through seven hundred thousand dollars in equity due to that um, two thousand eight recession. Yeah. Okay. And so you, have, so, so there so, were they, you know you that, more concerned about your stock portfolio all, than stock, it was all, cash. Also, right. also up until that point, if I remember correctly, and I'm, I'm, I'm my dates may be all wrong and screwed up. All we had up to that point was something like Columbine. Uh, before that, we really didn't have this school shooting thing going on. Sandy Hook was 2012. Yeah. There was a lot of them. If you look at that, no matter how much propaganda you think it is, that did have dates and it did have schools. Well, uh, well did have the name we've of the had shooters. 18 of these school shootings this year. Um, Virginia. Virginia Tech happened before I moved down here in 2007. I wasn't. Sandy looking. Hook was December 2012. Yeah, <laughs> we've had 18 mass shootings since the first of the year. Now, obviously, we're some sick puppies. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We are. You know, we're not too well. Too many people walking around with warm noses and not but listening to be. But, 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 how many? How many people went into post offices, post office employees, and shot up post offices when it was the uh, when it was the no, thing there, of the there day? There were to... a couple of postal employees that did that, and then we came up with the term "going postal." postal. And so and you thought stopped. every postman was carrying a gun <laughs> and going to kill then somebody. There, there were a whole bunch of workplace things yeah. besides post there, office. There, 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 always, yeah. there always been we, those kind of things, but yeah. not on the mass dis extermination level of say this school the other day or Sandy Hook or the gay nightclub down in Florida. I mean, or what went on in, in Las Vegas. You're talking about some guy who goes in, shoots a gun, kills maybe a couple of his employees, maybe his ex-girlfriend and her boyfriend, and, 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 and runs away from the scene. But we're talking here you about... W.A.B., in, uh, and that stands for what about, uh, uh, in Paris, when they uh, had that concert with, uh, yeah. I forget the name of the gal. It was out of Grande. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How many people died in that bombing? Uh, I, I'm trying to remember now. It was very low. It was, it was quite low. There was, there was a lot of people in the hospital, but the, the actual death number was. And, was and, the, and, the, and, the, and the guy they captured in Belgium who bombed another uh, uh, venue like Again, that. Let's Look, talk about us. I'm talking about our neighborhood well, and us, okay? Well, and we're not. And what you're doing is you're constantly talking about terrorism. He's talking about terrorism. This was not terrorism and because the kid was not as long. Uh, our kids shooting it, kids. It, it, but that's it, it, all terrorism. It, it, this but wasn't. This act it. wasn't terrorism. It was then because he wasn't we Islamic. Then why are doing something about the white terrorism? Because we should, that wasn't we should be, but uh, President Trump and his toadies have taken white supremacists and the KKK off that list of investigation I, I think because it's more important to go after goddamn ISIS. I, I think that's Russian fake news that was planted by their... Bullshit. Uh, uh, you know, the Russians have been planting stuff and they've been dividing this country... Not according, uh, to, not according to Trump. Yeah, not according to Trump. <laughs> Phil, uh, I'm 72 Mueller. years old and this country's been divided all of my life. It's just a matter of how we choose to divide it. To the, yeah. the God Mueller... Uh, he uh, has made these indictments against these 13 Russians because they, he says that what they were doing was they were planting dis divisive information on Facebook, taking out ads, a pro and con to both Hillary and yeah. Trump. Oh, oh, and your and point they, is, what, what does this have to do with what we were discussing? <laughs> it has to do a lot with it because what, what's happening is that we're being invaded. Uh, and, I told you uh, that. You wouldn't listen to me. What is wrong with you people? Your president doesn't want to act upon it. Yeah. Okay. You well, know, some people think the world is flat, but, you know, uh, based, on this new information, based on this, I didn't want to act on it before either, but based on this new information, uh, I have a different opinion of uh, what's yeah. well, going on with the Russian uh, interference. Yeah, well, that's, a, that's an argument and a discussion for yet another day, because this day is kind of like uh, come to a close. Oh, boy, I'm exhausted. This is... But you're supposed to be. Yeah, right. Uh, I, I, you know, I just like to come in here and just have some fun with some friends. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> you know, that oh, you, you, you better get on the intersection then. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, thank, thanks, Phil. I appreciate it. Uh, well, we won't see you tomorrow night, right? Okay, the coast is clear, Tom. You can call. Uh, uh, Vernon, thank you so much for calling. You're, you've been terrific my tonight. Entry, my entry for tomorrow. Uh, 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 yeah. And uh, Ray, what, would, what did you just send? What, what, uh, what? I said, uh, I, in Morse code, I said bye. Oh, oh I said, okay. Oh. Ray Renati, God bless you. I love you. You know, keep calling. Thanks, you, so. you make okay. this panel great. Same with you, Renee. Good to have you here. Rob, you, right. you know it's always a pleasure. Scott has disappeared already. Uh, Bobby <laughs> Burr, thank you so much. A lot of, lot of comments from you tonight and really good for the discussion. Good, good show, everybody. Give a big wave goodbye to all the folks out there who are watching. And uh, we'll see you hopefully again tomorrow night. Uh, that's it for our citizens panel. That's it for uh, what we're doing uh, right here tonight. Let me just cl clear off the lines here so that uh, Jack can use them for the intersection, which is next over most of the same station. By the way, at, mid at 1 o'clock this morning, it's Connections. So that's, that's the whole lineup. I'll be back again tomorrow after Damian Chaplin is on at 9.30 with the, uh, uh, the exchange at 10 o'clock. Same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye.